case 12 is an 11 year old with left sided paralysis and seizure. Here we have some images from CT. Now we move on to MR. These are T2 weighted images. This is a flare image. Now post contrast images. And finally, an ADC image from diffusion wave imaging. So your question is, what is the most likely diagnosis? And what is the underlying pathology of this disease? So here we have a case of Sturge-Weber syndrome. This is a failure of normal fetal cortical veins to develop, and this paucity of cortical veins leads to extensive medullary deep laterals. On imaging, this leads to cortical calcifications and a kind of tramp track appearance, which you can often see on radiographs or CT. On MR, this can have a somewhat uh, kind of frightening appearance. You can get leptomeningeal enhancement and you can get this PO, PL angiomatosis which is very prominent, uh, subarachnoid space filled with vessels. It doesn't suppress on flare, and it can enhance very avidly. You can get uh, gliosis and atrophy of the affected lobe. Here you see the cortical calcifications that we were referring to. So you have this kind of tram track type uh, cortical calcification. Uh, here on flare, you get incomplete, incomplete flare suppression in those areas. On post-contrast imaging, you get diffuse leptomeningeal and PL enhancements. You can also see the very prominent veins that uh, drain centrally. Uh, that's because those cortical veins fail to develop. Here on diffusion, you can get some areas of diffusion abnormality, and that can be just a sign of venous congestion and or infarct in those areas. As we mentioned, the underlying pathology of this disease is failure of cortical veins to form which causes venous congestion, and you can see that manifested by these abnormal medullary veins, which we pointed out. 